Hi guys, Tiffany here with a cosplay tutorial on how to make the Star Seeker Keyblade from the game Kingdom Hearts. And of course, there is a blueprint which is available on my website www.tiffanygordoncosplay.com or see the link below in the description. To first start off making this, I worked on the bone structure for the Keyblade. And to do this, I used a CPVC pipe which I then followed the shape of the keyblade, putting indications on the pipe with a sharpie so that way I know where to bend. And with the use of a heat gun and heat resistant gloves, I applied heat to all of the indicated marks on the CPBC pipe, heating it up so that way it would start to be able to bend into the shape that I wanted. And when it would start to bend, I would then put it to my template and hold it in place until it would cool. That way it would harden in that shape that I wanted. And I continued to repeat this process until the final piece looked like this. And for the handle part of the keyblade, I ended up cutting a smaller piece of CPVC pipe that would insert inside the curved part and I glued it in place using epoxy. To encase the CPVC pipe, I then traced four times onto 10 millimeter EVA foam the shape of the main keyblade. And once all the pieces were cut out, I then applied contact cement glue to two of the pieces, letting each one fully dry before attaching them together, and then laid the bone structure on top of these two EVA foam pieces and traced the outline of the CPVC pipe. And then with a box cutter, cut out the traced section where the CPVC pipe is going to lay, followed by inserting the CPVC pipe in the now hollowed out EVA foam part. And for attaching it in place, I used hot glue, following the edge of the CPVC pipe with the EVA foam, and then going back with a zigzag across all three pieces so that way it would fully adhere to one another. Once all of the hot glue was dry, I then applied contact cement glue to the other two pieces of EVA foam and placed them on either side. This way it would make a sandwich with the CPVC pipe in the very center. Next, I used a box cutter and slowly carved around the edges, rounding the main piece. This will make it a lot easier to go back and sand it afterwards and be a lot less messy. And here's what it looks like after carving as much of the EVA foam as I felt I needed to. And proceeded to my workbench where I sanded all of the pieces nice and round. Next, I cut out all of the decorative star pieces for the main body out of 2mm EVA foam and then rounded all of the edges using a sanding drum and traced where each of the stars would lay, followed by applying contact cement glue to both pieces and then attaching the stars to the body of the keyblade. And then used a heat gun to heat treat all of the EVA foam so far. To make the pointed parts at the very top of the keyblade, I first used tracing paper and made a hook-like shape, which I then mirrored so that way I would have the spike-like shape and repeated a similar shape for the rest of the spikes. Next, I transferred my little tracing paper patterns onto four millimeter EVA foam, repeating each of the pieces four times and cut out using an X-Acto knife. Then I went to my workbench and sanded all of one side of the pieces at a 45, and then used contact cement glue to glue each of the pieces together, slowly making a little basket-like shape. I then traced where they were gonna sit with a Sharpie onto the main body of the keyblade and then glued them together. And when they were all attached, went back to my workbench and sanded all of the edges slightly rounded 
so that way it would all look even. Now for the moon. For this, I cut out the flat shape of the moon and then made a three-dimensional paper model to pretty much the shape that I wanted and then trace this onto four millimeter EVA foam and again cut out with an X-Acto knife and sanded the pointed center part at a 45 degree angle. When both the halves were done, I then attached them together in the center, then traced the flat shape onto two millimeter EVA foam and applied contact cement glue onto the two millimeter foam as well as to the three-dimensional moon shape. And when the glue was dry, attach the moon to the sheet of two millimeter EVA foam. This will make it so that way if your shape gets a little off, this will also make it a lot easier for your moon to lay flat and not twist on you. And when it was attached, I then cut out the moon with an X-Acto knife and repeated this a second time for the other half gluing the two halves of the moon together to the one piece of two millimeter EVA foam, so that way it would create one piece. There was a little bit of hangover with the foam, so I did end up going to my workbench and sanding the edge again nice and round. And here's what the moon looks like so far. For attaching the moon to the body of the keyblade, I first indicated with Sharpies where the moon lined up and then applied contact cement glue, letting both pieces dry and then attaching them together in the very center. And now for the main star! For this, I also ended up making a little three-dimensional paper model that I cut out of four millimeter EVA foam, made a small indentation where all of the points would be on the flat surface of the star and cut out a channel along these lines at a 45 using an X-Acto knife, removing the EVA foam afterwards. By doing this, it'll make it so your star will bend nice and even and will have points where those channels you just carved out were. Next, I glued the seam together and then sanded the bottom part of the star flat. And just like the moon we did earlier, cut out a two millimeter EVA foam shape of the flat star, which I then glued the two halves together. And once the star was one complete piece, I then went back to the workbench with a sanding drum and rounded the seam so it was nice and pretty again. and followed by attaching the star to the inside of the moon, again with contact cement glue. And here's what it looks like so far. I did end up adding foam clay to the sides of the points, so that way it would have a smoother channel. And to do this, I used water to apply to the EVA foam first, and then put foam clay, which I then smoothed out with my finger and with water again, so that way it looks natural. For the wing handle part of the keyblade, I cut two pieces out of 10 millimeter EVA foam and glued it all together with contact cement glue, as well as cutting out detailed parts from two millimeter EVA foam. Originally, I had it all as one piece, but decided later on to cut the piece into two, and this decision really helped in the end for sanding all of these pieces, which I first started by sanding all of the pieces flat, and then went around all of the edges rounding them. And after roughing up the surface of the CPVC pipe with sandpaper, I then attached the EVA foam parts to it with contact cement glue. For the rest of the stars throughout the keyblade, I repeated the same method of making a paper model and then making stars out of EVA foam and then gluing all of the pieces in place again with contact cement glue.
And the final detail on the main body of the Keyblade was to add a small 2mm strip of EVA foam from the hilt to the body of the Keyblade to complete the piece. Now to talk about the keychain part. For this, I made little four pointed stars out of four millimeter EVA foam, cutting each of them twice, as well as gluing them to a two millimeter EVA foam for the center. And for the chain parts of the keychain, I used the Cost Tools Hole Drill Kit to drill holes into 10 millimeter EVA foam using their largest hole set and then using the second largest one in the center to make the chain look. And for the moon section of the keychain, I cut out of 10 millimeter EVA foam and then sounded all of the edges round. The only step left was to slowly attach each of these little pieces together with contact cement glue. Attach a small strip of EVA foam, and then the foam part of this build is done. The only step left before painting was to apply contact cement glue to the CPVC pipe. This is a very important step because this is what the Plasti Dip is going to adhere onto. Otherwise, it would just peel straight off. And once all the glue was dry, I then went into my garage and sprayed three heavy coats of Plasti Dip to the entire Keyblade. Now for the fun part, painting! And for this tutorial, all of the paint was provided by Createx Color's Wicked Color Airbrush Paint line. Thank you so much for supporting this build and go support them by using their paint. I highly recommend it. To start off, I first used yellow onto all of the moon and stars, and then made an orange mix from yellow and red and applied it on top of the yellow. Followed by a little bit of shadow by adding slight black to the mix. I then mixed black and white to make a very light gray color and applied it to all of the stars on the body. And once all of the paint was dry, I then masked it all off with masking tape and paper. Next, I did a base coat of black airbrush paint to the entire keyblade and then proceeded to do a gradient on the body part of the keyblade. First, starting closest to the hilt with a dark blue and purple mix, and then added a little bit of purple and white, making it a little bit lighter, going halfway down the blade, and then more white to the paint, slowly making it to a really light lavender at the very top of the keyblade. Next, I went to paint the star in the very center of the handle, doing a light blue color with a mix of blue and white, and then going in with a deep blue for more shadows around the star. And once that was dry, then masked it off with masking tape. For the handle wings, I started off with a very light white-black mix of airbrush paint, and then at the very bottom of the wings added a mix of yellow and white to have a little bit of a glowing look. And when that paint was dry, I then went in with a mix of white and blue into all of the corners, spraying lightly and then wiping off the top surfaces with a paper towel, leaving all of the blue around the edges. And once again, covered up all of those sections with paper and masking tape. For the star circle pieces on the handle, I started off with a blue-black mixture going around all the edges, masking the center off, and then going around all of the edges with a gray-white-black mix. Then when all of the paint was dry, I finally got to remove all of the masking tape and the paper and slowly reveal what the Keyblade looks like so far. I did feel like I wanted a little bit more pop around the stars, so I did go back by hand applying the black airbrush paint with a paintbrush around all of the edges. 
And the very last step for finishing off this keyblade was to seal it, and I ended up using Createx Colors UVLS Clear Satin. Applying an even coat throughout the whole keyblade using a paintbrush. And do 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 do, the Star Seeker Keyblade is done! What's your favorite keyblade from Kingdom Hearts? Let me know in the comments! And also, like the video and subscribe to our channel, and I will see you for our next video! Much love, guys! Mwah!